Jesus told us 2,000 years ago that our mission is to go and make disciples of all nations. He also promised us that only after we accomplish that task will we receive the blessing of His return. So, how are we doing accomplishing our mission? To answer that, let's classify the 7 billion people on the earth today into three groups. Let's start with the Christians. About 33% of the world's population would identify itself as Christian. We call this segment of the population World C. C for Christian. It's important to remember that not all of the people that fall into World C are true believers in Christ. They merely identify themselves as Christian because of nominal belief in Jesus or because they live in a country where everyone is considered Christian, so they would do the same. Next, there's the 38% of the world that has access to the gospel but has chosen not to follow Jesus. They have Bibles in their language, churches nearby, friends or co-workers who are potentially Christians, or access to other Christian resources in their language. These people have access to the good news, but just haven't acted on it yet. This segment of the population is called World B. That leaves us with 29% of the world, just over one out of every four people on this planet who not only have never heard of Jesus, they have no chance of hearing the good news of Jesus Christ. They have no access to the gospel, no Bibles, no churches, no believers nearby, no chance to learn about Jesus. We call that 29% World A. Now on to missionaries. Only one out of every 1,800 Christians in World C decides to serve as a cross-cultural missionary. So, we can pull 400,000 missionaries out of that World C population. That's our total cross-cultural missionary force worldwide. Did you know that 72% of all our missionaries are going to World C? That's right! The vast majority of the missionaries being sent out are going to the people of the world that have Bibles and established churches. 25% of the missionaries are sent to World B, where there is already some access to the church and to the Bible. That leaves only 3% of the total missionary force to handle all of World A, the section of the population without any chance of hearing about Jesus. 29% of the world has no way to hear the gospel, but we're sending only a tiny portion of our Christian workers to them. What about finances? Annually, all those Christians in World C earn a total of $42 trillion. And together, they give about $700 billion to Christian causes each year. That includes everything. Christian nonprofits, churches, youth programs, missions, etc. Can you do the math? Less than 2% of Christian income is being given to Christ's causes. Out of that $700 billion given to all Christian causes, only $45 billion is given to missions specifically. That's a little over 6%. In fact, there is more money reported embezzled from the church each year than is given to missions. Remember those 400,000 missionaries? We have $45 billion to support them and their cross-cultural work. But how exactly is it allocated? Well. $39 billion goes to World C every year. Yep, 87% of that mission's money is being spent in areas of the world that have Bibles and churches available. $5.4 billion, or 12%, goes to World B each year, those that have access to the gospel message but have rejected it. That leaves only $450 million, or 1% of all mission's money, going to World A, the least reached people of the world. To put that into perspective, Annually, Americans spend more money on Halloween costumes for their pets than get sent to World A. To summarize, only 3% of our missionary force, armed with only 1% of missions giving, is going out to reach the 2 billion people who don't have access to the gospel. 2 billion people are still waiting for the good news of Jesus Christ. So here's a question for you. What are you going to do to change that?